I could eat poke every day, but in Phoenix, the only fish that I would eat raw costs $15 per pound. I'm gonna explain my favorite poke adjacent weeknight dinner at home, but before you get your hopes up, let me tell you now, I cook the fish. That's the bad news. The good news is the final dish is gonna taste way closer to the real deal than the typical sushi lovers cooked fish meal of sriracha mayo star kissed tuna rice bowls. Here's the plan. Step one, cook a pot of short grain sushi rice. I'm gonna assume you already know how to do that, but instead of cooking the rice and then mixing seasoned vinegar into it, I'm gonna cheat by seasoning the water itself. Here's what I mean. The bag says to cook one and a half cups of rinsed rice with two cups of water. So I'll add some unseasoned rice vinegar, sugar, and a little salt into a measuring cup first, and then get the rest of the way to that two cup mark with plain water. Grocery stores also sell a version of rice vinegar that's already seasoned for you, but now you know how to do it yourself in case you don't have that. Follow the cooking instructions on your bag of rice. Mine takes 25 minutes to cook, so I'll use that hands-off time to prepare some poke bowl toppings. Slice an avocado, crack open a can of furikake, cut a mango. I keep these shelled edamame in the freezer so I can use those. You don't need a dozen toppings, you could leave it there. But I already have these green onions and this cucumber in the fridge. This would also be a good use case for imitation crab mix or those pre-made wonton chips that they sell for topping salads. For the dressing, you could go with the classic sriracha mixed into kewpie mayo with a drizzle of sesame sesame oil, but my choice for homemade poke is always this shoyu recipe from a 2015 Action Bronson video. It's got sweet onions, soy sauce, grated ginger, and spicy togarashi. By the way, that old video is how I learned how to use cooked golden beets as a fish replacement for vegan poke, and it's not bad at all. Those who don't eat fish might want to give that a try. The final missing piece is a salmon filet. I will be cooking it, so it doesn't have to be high quality enough to eat raw, but it does have to be good salmon with a mild flavor and a supple texture. I wouldn't use frozen vacuum sealed pink salmon or tail end coho for this. I'd rather just go to the fish counter of a regular grocery store and ask for a salmon filet from the head side. That's where the thicker part is. I'll ask them to remove the skin, but keep it in the package. You don't have to keep the skin, but I like to fry it in a hot pan to make little skin chips. This fish counter filet is more expensive than commodity grade pencil thin frozen salmon, but it's still cheaper than buying sushi grade salmon. Again, the name of the game here is gentle cooking. So here's what I do. Cut the fish into one inch cubes and then sprinkle it with a big pinch of salt and a small pinch of sugar. Wait until the rice has eight minutes left on the timer. At that point, put the fish cubes directly on top of the rice and then put the lid back on. I'm gonna play that part again so that you see how fast I do it. Steam is what cooks rice, so if you dilly-dally and let too much steam out, you'll throw off the cook. Do this part quickly. Keep the flame turned off. The heat from the rice cooks the salmon. When the rice timer dings, the salmon is cooked enough to flake, but just barely enough to be vaguely reminiscent of raw fish cubes. It changed color, but that'll be less noticeable once it's dressed in sauce. If you've ever had ceviche, where the fish has a firm cooked texture, but maintains a raw-ish vibe, this will be pretty similar. If you don't really care about maintaining that vibe, you could just slow roast a whole salmon filet in a 200 degree oven until the internal temp reads 120 F. I made a whole video about that technique already. The texture will be much flakier and less poke adjacent, but that might be an acceptable trade for some people. There is also a third option, which is to cook the salmon sous vide to like 115 F. That brings the fish into half cooked so-called mi cui territory, where it's still raw-ish, but by no means pasteurized. So you're gonna wanna eat it all in one sitting. It's not gonna hold well overnight once you open the bag. I prefer to do it the way that I showed you, but the thing I want you to learn from all of this is that gently cook cooked, good quality salmon can get you most of the way to the eating experience of top tier raw salmon, assuming you'll be combining it with hot rice and a flavorful sauce and a bunch of toppings. I'll be the first to say that any criticism that you could levy against this dish is totally valid. It is bastardized, it is whitewashed, so there's not even kombu in the rice. Would I serve this to someone and call it poke? Absolutely not. But if I make two big portions and serve it to the eaters of this house, everyone's mouths are gonna be way too busy horking down a tasty lunch to even ask what the dish is called. They're saying, mm, thank you so much for a meal that tastes like it ought to cost 20 bucks a serving. To which I then respond, really, it's no problem at all. It's just gonna ask you a couple questions real quick. The following is an ad read for YouTube Premium. Can you believe it? It's my honest opinion that YouTube Premium is the most valuable media subscription for anyone who watches YouTube every day. Once I started using it, it instantly became unbelievable that people all around me don't use it. So I bought a family subscription and shared it with all my siblings. It gets rid of banner ads and mid-roll platform ads. It lets you leave media playing in the background when you lock your phone and put it in your pocket. And the subscription fee that you pay gets split up among all the channels that you watch, so your viewership still supports the channels that you like, even without all of the ads popping up. 
YouTube hooked me up with a special affiliate link to try this out. If you click it, you'll get a two month free trial of YouTube premium instead of the normal one month free trial. And if you subscribe through the link in this post or the banner appearing in this video, I may get a commission. Thank you, YouTube premium. I hope everyone tries your cool product.